Before we get started, I want to thank our newest Patreon member, Sean. It is our members that help keep this show on the air. If you'd like to join them on a monthly basis, patreon.com slash daily Detroit. Hello, friends, and welcome to your Daily Detroit. I have a coffee in my right hand, and I'm scritching the head of studio dog Gabby in my left. And this is your Daily Detroit for Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. I'm Jer Stays, and across the table from me, Cheyenne Osorini. So good to see you. It's nice to see you, too. We survived Mackinac. We, we, we really did. We did, and let's knock on wood. All test negative. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry for those who have tested positive. Very sorry. Very sorry. If people don't know, if you ever get the fortune of going up to Mackinac Island, the pot roast at Yankee Rebel Tavern, mm, so good. Even if you take it to go, it's so good. Yeah. I got my Clydes in St. Ignis. So I think it was a successful trip for both of us. Let's get into the stories because there is a lot to talk about on a more serious tip. I want to make sure that we get started by airing some grievances at the Festivus poll for you, Cheyenne, because... Not just you, but a number of listeners have shared their frustrations around gas prices, food prices. And again, I know that some of that's aimed at Mr. Devin O'Reilly. I'm going to let him answer for his specific things. But you had something else to bring to the table. And I want to share some tips and also some news items around it. Right. So I think for me, when I'm listening to people who are frustrated with the current prices of gas and the current prices of food and housing... All the things. And we're going to talk things. about that in a whole nother story. Right. I completely understand exactly where they're coming from. It is hard being a person with a family and a person with a family who has a medically complex child to make ends meet. Yeah. I feel like those uh, millionaires with those tips on how to save money are disingenuous because it's like they're saying to people like, don't get that cup of Starbucks and stop eating avocado toast, millennials. And I just want to slap them across the face and say, people aren't spending their money on Starbucks and avocado toast. That's not going to make the difference. No. Like, like this, there is this perception gap here between many wealthy folks where it's like, oh, well, I scrimped and saved. Well, guess what? Things have changed. And also, generational wealth is a thing. Generational wealth is a thing. And also, school cost more Mm -hmm. than it did. Now, you know, we can have a whole debate about student loans, all that other stuff, but bottom line, school costs more. You can't work your way for the most part through school with a part-time job and pay off most of your bills like you could 20, 30 years ago. No. You got the cost of gas, you've got the price of food. And so I understand the frustration. So I want to talk about ways to deal with that frustration. How can we share some tips? And frankly, what are some ways that we can like emotionally deal with this too? Because this is a shock. I think everybody got through like the worst of the pandemic parts and we had this collective semi release of breath for some of us. Yeah. I think really one of the things is, is that when you have a set amount of money and your gas prices are going up and your food prices are going up and you have eliminated all Of the extras. These are just living essentials. And there was that hot moment where it's like, oh, wages are going up for a second. We feel like we're catching up. And then there goes the rug out from underneath you. Exactly. So I have friends who are literally saying, how am I supposed to buy food for my family and afford gas to get to my job so I can pay for food and gas? I don't know how it ranks nationally, but up at Mackinac, a housing panel I was at, They talked about the concept that 38% of Michiganders are unable to pay their bills right now. Mm -hmm. So, Jared, let's talk about some practical tips Mm -hmm. that we might be able to do and to give people like an idea of of how we save money. Well, one thing is a tip from a listener, and it's going to sound crazy. Grab Instacart for a couple of reasons. So one thing is, is that if you're somebody who shops at Costco or someplace like that a lot, you're going to be driving 20, 30 minutes each way burning gas and time, Yeah, you can use your Costco membership and your Instacart or just use Instacart and get stuff delivered through there. Because I think one of the things people forget, time is money. And also with gas prices being so high, if you had to drive 20 or 30 minutes someplace, and it's crazy to think, but I do know of plenty of areas around town 
where that's the case, that's one way to go. And I know it. some people are squidgy about it, but when you're coming especially to packaged foods, things like that, I've had good luck with the produce, but it's something where it can save you a ton of time and money because, you know, you're not driving. I didn't know that you didn't have to have a membership to Costco to use Instacart. There's like two different price levels. I think you get a little bit more discount if you're a member. Oh, okay. So I think one of the things, too, that I do is if I have to run errands and it's like I have to run multiple, I go to a specific area that has everything that I need within like a short distance. So I hit up multiple places at one time. So that way I'm not going back and forth a lot. And I do have to go back and forth a lot. I have a kid in school. I have a kid that has doctor's appointments, therapy appointments multiple times a week. I am all over this region and I have to work. So I do spend a lot of time in my car and it does get expensive because I have an SUV. So one of the things I do is I take my uncle grocery shopping once a month at Kroger because that's what he likes to do. And I use my Kroger card and I get all of the gas points. Because he doesn't drive, I don't believe. Because he does not drive. No. No. So that's another way. If you have to go to Kroger, you can use your points for gas discounts. One of the other things that I do is I use Ibotta a lot, and which is a rebate program. And you can do it in the store where you sign up and you can like put the items that you want that have rebates. And then it just automatically goes onto your app. But if you go to Walmart, for instance, it's not my favorite, but you can do Walmart pickup and use your Ibotta. And so that automatically gets loaded. And then you can use that money for the rebates and get gas cards. Now, this thing isn't a solution for everybody, but this is something that has benefited me a ton. Over here at the house, we drive a Chevy Volt. Now, that car doesn't work for everybody. I understand why you've got an SUV between the two kids, the mom, the husband, everything else, right? Like, I get it. For me, I'm able to be a little bit more downscaled. The great thing about the Volt, although it's not a fully electric car, it was something that was able to be picked up pretty inexpensively compared to other cars. And your first 30-ish miles, depending on your air temperature, are basically super cheap free because you're plugged in. And if you can work that and get, like, anywhere you can get within 15 miles and back, and you're not paying for gas, that is a huge thing. And living in the city, frankly, a lot of things are close by. It's not like it was 10 years ago. And like 10 years ago, it wasn't the desert people like to portray it to me. But I can get pretty much everywhere I need to be for all essentials without having to put gas in the car. And something like that, yeah, it's a compromise because, you know, you bring up the back, it's not an SUV. You're going to have to make some choices. Mm -hmm. But it's an option that has really saved a lot of money around here. And so think about those kind of options, being more gas friendly. Those are kind of things that are important. In fact, most vehicles, a friend of mine has a Subaru. You can flip the dashboard and see where your miles per gallon are going and how you're driving. Yeah. Right. And if you drive, and this seems like silly, but if you drive closer to the speed limit, you're you're probably going to use less gas than if you're driving 10 over. Then, and that's another thing to think about. And also if you have the proper air in your tires, That also affects your gas mileage. Air conditioning eats up gas mileage, too. These are all little silly things that, like, I feel crazy for my uncle telling me about, (laughs) but I think they're all true, you know, especially depending on the age of your car. Yeah. Another thing I want to point out for people who might be on the SNAP program and who have the bridge card. I don't know if everybody knows this, but there is a program called the Double Up Food Bucks. And so you can get your fruits and veggies when you use your bridge card at certain locations and you can get double of those items. Like you can, you, you the price is double. So you have more room in your budget to buy more fresh fruits and vegetables. And some of that's through the Fair Food Network, which they actually just got a, a new CEO. I think I want to make sure I have them on because yeah. I got to press info about that. So that's something that uh, is good and important to do. And, and Fair Food Network is actually based out of here. It is. So we can leave the link to the doubleupfoodbucks.org website in the show notes where you can locate grocery stores that offer this program. I know Western Market in Ferndale has it and a couple other places. And then also Eastern Market. Mm -hmm. So shopping in season, shopping local can help with your uh, pocketbook for food.
All right, Cheyenne, let's talk TV. Okay. And I want to talk specifically real estate, like HGTV, because I am an addict. <laughs> That's the only television I, re- I watch, HGTV, PBS. I, too, like HGTV and DIY Network and all of that fun stuff. So I'm really proud to talk about Bargain Block returning for a second season. It's going to be Wednesday night. So tonight, if you're hearing it or catch it on the reruns, I am so glad to see this get picked up for a second season. I did not know this. It pulled more than 20 million viewers seeing the city of Detroit and nearby and the work that they are doing. And I think that is absolutely amazing. I want to talk about what you love about the show and what I love about the show. Because I wonder if they're the same thing, they're different, because I tune in every time. You and I, we've known about them for a while. Like, even before Bargain Block was announced, we had been watching their listings go up and being like, oh, wow, they're doing a lot of work on these Mm -hmm. houses for not a lot of money. And I was like, I like that. But what I like about the show is that all of the houses are different in that they all have a theme, but it all just works. And when they're talking about the theme in the beginning of the show, you're like, what? I don't know about that. And then it all comes together and you're like, hot diggity dog. They pulled it off. You know? (laughs) just I mean, part of that's the creative editing, right? Like we all know, like I used to work in TV. There's, there's some editing there, especially oh, when course. you're doing like four, sh- like, I don't know if it's four houses, but they're doing a bunch of houses. I-, I love the like moving through the neighborhood with the shopping cart. I know it's a little over the top. See, I don't like that part because I'm like, come on. I know you have a truck. I know. It- <laughs> <laughs> I understand. See, I've moved stuff with a shopping cart before, so I can feel the kinship right there. <laughs> so, but I mean, I get it. I get it's for TV. It's like a whole TV thing. But for me, I'm just like, oh, my God. Again, I know you have a truck. I just saw you pull up. Like, you can load everything into the truck. Anyway, so what else do you like about the show? (sighs) For me, it's that it's actually affordable. Yeah. So, so much in this whole country. Let's let's not just talk about Detroit here. And we're going to talk about this more in a minute. So much in this country is so, like, unaffordable and feels unattainable. And it feels like I could do that. It feels like it's something that I could be a part of that I could actually approach. Because let me tell you what we're going to talk about with a house being nearly $2 million is not something that I'm going to attain on a podcaster's salary. Oh, God, no. But something like what they're doing, I feel like it could be a part of. I feel like it's something that's accessible and I know that the prices are going to go up. The other thing is, is that I like the little cheats and tips that they do. Mm -hmm. And I found myself doing some of them myself. Like there's some really creative ideas that both Keith and Evan come up with. I want to add something to this. The other thing I like about their design aspects of their show is that every single time you look at a house that has been flipped, it is the same white subway tile. It is the same (laughs) gray Builder special, the boob light. Yeah. Their designs are not your normal flipper houses. The porches have character? Yes. You know I love me a good porch. I mean, the curb appeal of their houses makes me excited. I love the way they look in their photos. I love the fact that they're buying houses in a neighborhood and building on each one, which is helping the neighborhood. And it's not just like tearing everything down and building exactly. new. Because one of the things we learned, credit to Chase Cantrell for this, is the demolition isn't sometimes the answer. Like, I know there's a big push about demolition. I know a lot of people like it. There's other people who don't. But if you can save a house, Mm -hmm. it's a lot better than having to start from scratch, especially with how expensive it is to build any sort of house right now. Well, and also the environmental aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if you're tearing down a house, all of that material is going in the landfill. Unless you find wonderful people like Woodward Throwbacks or whatever to, like— to like grab it or whatever exactly. or, or reuse Habitat for Humanity, those kind of things. But that that's a small percentage. Who's your favorite character? You're going to be like, what? I love Shay. I can see it though. I love Shay because- She brings it down to reality because, all right, look, I like them both, but it's definitely like Evan and his like large kind of groundedness. He's the guy who like holds onto like Keith's balloon. Yeah. Right? Because you need somebody to hold your balloon. He's a realist. But but Shay takes it to another level, and yeah. Shay is the Earth. Yes, Shay is the Earth who like holds it all together. Yeah, where it's like okay, okay, okay. But also like she knows her stuff, 
And when you think about a real estate agent, sometimes it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Mm -hmm. No offense, though, real estate agents, I know. but No, no, no. no. But but there are some that I have met over the years where I'm like, you will tell me anything you need to tell me to get this sale. Exactly. That's not the whole profession, but I've definitely run into that much more than once. And I, I feel that she's very honest in what she's telling them. Let's head over to another HGTV star. Yeah, because guess what? What? Nicole Curtis's Ransom Gillis house. I'm, I say it's hers, but it's not. It's forever and ever tied to her because mm-hmm. of that series, I think it was in 2015, redoing that in partnership with what is now Rocket Loads or Rocket Companies right. to redo that thing. It's for sale. Oh. It is on the market, just appeared. Shouts out to uh, Robin Runyon over on Urban Eyes for first spotting it. And I want to talk to her about this for of sure. Of course. But uh, yeah, for sale. Price. Guess the price. Uh, well, I mean, you kind of gave a little allusion to it earlier. I mean, it's just under what two million? Yeah, one point nine nine million. One million nine hundred and ninety thousand dollars for a three bedroom, <laughs> two bath, two thousand eight hundred and fifteen square feet. Your estimated Zillow payment is nearly fourteen thousand dollars a month for this place, and the pictures are all up there. We can put a link to the. Uh, Pictures of the inside in the show notes. I mean, it's a beautiful property. So, Cheyenne, looking up uh, the property records real quick on this. Did you know that it's actually unit one of two? What? Yeah. There's actually two units with this thing. And I'm not going to betray the property owner of the other one. But the last sale date on this was 500 grand in 2020. Uh. (laughs) Interesting, right? Nice. Yeah, like it's some sort of condo plan for this. So, I think that's really interesting. That's quite the uptick. 1.99 from 500. Yeah. And also the fact that it's just like not even the full house. It's only half of the house. That's a lot of money for half of a historic house. Between that, some of the places I'm seeing for sale in the city modern development. I mean, Brush Park is now again Millionaire's Row. It is Detroit's Millionaire's Row again. Everything old is new again. Under the sun, as they would say with the bare naked ladies. Absolutely. I mean, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous spot. I will never be able to afford to live there. But, I mean, somebody will, and somebody will really enjoy it. I mean, the inside, I mean, it's just well done. It's it's a classy piece. But I think it's interesting to see it go up for sale now of all times. Yeah, where we're just talking about, like, people not being able to afford gas and food. But now there's this. But, I mean, there's two different worlds, right? Exactly. There's one world where it's like, oh, Well, my boat is a little – and then that's a frustrating thing about this. We thought that with the wages going up, you know, there was this talk about $15 an hour with the minimum wage and making – that being a legal dispute. I can tell you even up at the conference, people are like, oh, of course, we'll sign on to that because there's – we're not even paying less than that. Yeah. Like it's not even a question. And so it's so – got to be so – it's so frustrating to see some of those things like just get wiped out by inflation. Right, any of those gains. It's really interesting to talk about this new house. And look, there's going to be fancy areas of town. I don't begrudge people for making money, but it is interesting in this town, like the the two different things. And again, I think this is what's so frustrating as a longtime Detroiter, as somebody who who has roots in this community. I feel like it's the middle class getting squeezed out yet again, not just mm-hmm. in the city of Detroit, but across the region. I mean, it's definitely, once again, I'm looking at a K uh, recovery like we talked about in the beginning of the pandemic. All right, a couple things before we let you go. It was fabulous to meet so many people at Ferndale Pride. What an outpouring of love. We were nonstop on our feet the entire time. We My legs pride. felt like stumps. <laughs> I was so tired by the time I got home. I was just, I was out of it. And also my nose is peeling because of Ferndale Pride. So, <laughs> but I mean, it was so great to to see so many listeners and to meet so many new people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to have everybody stop by the arch and take pictures with it and tell us that they want us to rent it, which was <laughs> <laughs> which was an experience to say the least. So, yeah, I mean, it was great. Yeah, it did real well. Uh, The governor showed up for that, a bunch of other people. What a wonderful outdoor event uh, that really (sighs) – Ferndale is an amazing space. And I know people like to slag it sometimes. I never do because to me it is such a community that 
has come together and like really shown what you can do when you focus on being local, right? Like there are, of course, chains and things in Ferndale, but like downtown Ferndale is a great example of what you can do when you focus on your community and really – because there was a time Ferndale did not look like that. It was an intentional decision over the years to make Ferndale the walkable community it is and the engine for development in the northern part of the city. You know, you now see things in Hazel Park. You now see things in Oak Park. You know, hats off to them. So before we leave, I want to invite everybody to join me in a virtual blood drive in honor of my now one-year-old. He turned one years old today. So Cheyenne would like your blood. <laughs> please give me your blood, platelets, plasma, anything <laughs> you can donate. Well, not really you, right? No, like you're not yeah, collecting it. I don't it want it, but in the, your fridge. No, but the Red <laughs> that Cross. That would be creepy. It would be <laughs> I am not a vampire, I promise. But the Red Cross has virtual blood drives and this entire year, I've really been thinking about how we can honor and celebrate my one-year-old baby who has a very severe bleeding disorder. And I know I kind of talked about it a little bit when I came back from my maternity leave earlier this year or last year, technically. Uh, you know, I didn't really go into a lot of details, but my baby did almost die due to a massive brain bleed. And we needed, he needed so much blood and plasma and platelets to keep him alive. And so when my husband and I were talking about how we could celebrate his birthday, we really wanted to set up a blood drive to celebrate. And, you know, I have access to this giant platform, right? I'm entirely blessed in the fact that we have listeners and supporters who I can share this with. And I would be internally grateful if you would like to join me in this blood drive. Well, and I mean, I'm glad to support it. We have set up a special link that goes to the American Red Cross at dailydetroit.com slash donate for Dylan. Thank you, Randy Walker, for making that happen. Engineer Randy, you're the best. Yes. But yeah, that's dailydetroit.com slash donate for for Dylan. How does this work? All you have to do is when you go to that link, it will take you directly to our sign up page and you can pledge. And it's really easy. You just sign your name up, give them your email, and then it'll give you a list of all of the places that have blood drives that are going on or actual Red Cross locations where you can sign up to donate blood. And depending on the type of blood you have, you can sign up to do AB plasma donation, which is different than a regular blood donation. You could also do a power red or you can sign up for platelets. I know, for instance, my nephew has an overabundance of platelets. So like the Red Cross is always like knocking on his door going, can you donate platelets? My grandmother had a lot of plates. I mean, plate. No, never mind. <laughs> Not China. But okay. platelets. If you are interested in signing up and celebrating with us, I would greatly appreciate it. Well, make sure to check that out. DailyDetroit.com slash donate for Dylan. And with that, we are done for today. Uh, I'm getting nervous. I think I was so nervous that I forgot that it was happening when I talked to Fletcher <laughs> yeah. that uh, we have our 1000th episode get together outside at the congregation on the deck make sure to check it out we'd be gl so glad to see you and of course uh with that i guess i got no more nothing more to say i'm jer stays and i'm cheyenne serini oh uh, before i go what day is that happy hour friday this friday <laughs> the days they're, they're going by you're going by so they're fast. they're going by so fast with that i'm jer stays and i'm cheyenne serini remember to take care of each other that you are somebody and we'll see you around Detroit. <laughs>